Well, hey guys, I'm on my way out to go to the grocery store per usual. I'm wearing that super soft sweatshirt that I got from Abercrombie. It is, it is super comfortable. Anyways, what did you guys think of the Instagram Facebook uh, glitch that happened this week? I mean, by the time this goes up, you probably have already forgotten about it. I honestly didn't notice because I'm not on, I'm not on Instagram or Facebook during the day. I'm only on it. I post on there in the morning and then sometimes in the evening I'll check it. So I didn't notice, honestly, but um, I know, you know, if your livelihood is on Instagram, well then um, obviously you are probably nervous that am I going to be able to continue to work? I could see how that would be stressful. But it's interesting, you know, how we give these um, platforms a lot of control over our lives. You know, all the talk about how these algorithms favor showing you things that you engage with and about how the Facebook algorithms have are rumored to show you harmful things. It's interesting though, the algorithms show you what you engage with. So the, the question is, why are we engaging in things that are not good for us? That is, that is human behavior right there. Um, but you wanna know my opinion, you're like, no. So I'm here to learn about skincare and not just listen to you pontificate. Anyways, um, in my opinion, I think social media and the internet in general has created this issue where we as a society are not properly learning to manage negative emotions. I mentioned this before about how I'm not in favor of toxic positivity. I think people need to develop healthy ways to express and handle negative emotions. The internet, through anonymity, allows us to anonymously vent and engage in things that are draining us of joy and I just don't think it's healthy. Like, for example, if you don't like something or there's something that's bothering you nowadays, rather than figure out a way to deal with it or to talk to somebody about it. Now people go online and they think that they're talking to somebody about it by going into these communities where basically everybody thinks and feels exactly the same way that you do and they just uh, validate your negative feeling. And then rather than, rather than offering any kind of nuance because of the way these algorithms work, they amplify your negative emotion in an echo chamber of people who feel exactly the way that you do, but nobody has any resolution to it and becomes very harmful when you have these online communities that are echo chambers of negativity. And we are losing social skills despite the terminology social media. I mean, people, it's, when phones first came out, it was not, it was not acceptable to be on, to talk on the phone in front of people. As, as a matter of fact, when I was growing up, it was not acceptable to call somebody at like 6 p.m. because that was dinner time and that was just rude. Like you didn't call and interrupt somebody's dinner. That was rude. But now it's like, pfft, you need to be on 24 seven, always available. I mean, that's just the mindset now. And I don't think it really, is healthy to constantly be socializing so antisocially. <laughs> Our boundaries are, we've lost all sense of social boundaries and willingness to, willingness to tolerate people. You know, there are so many little things that people can't stand about each other now that it's like, really, that bothers you that much? the word moist, it's like really moist. Honestly, in the 90s, nobody cared about the word moist. It wasn't like, you didn't have an echo chamber to go invent this moist thing to. And so it, moist was not an issue. You could say moist without disgusting the world. So I'm back. 
just put on my robe. Some of you were asking where this robe is from, Costco. It's a Carol Hawkman, and Carol Hawkman makes the most comfortable robes. These are, they're really soft. This particular style is also really breathable, and the sleeves are kind of long though, so I'll roll them up. Anyways, I stopped by the P.O. box, and you guys sent me some nice cards, so I wanna show you guys what came. Yeah, there were a lot of beautiful cards. I like this one, it's got, looks like cherry blossoms, cute giraffe, some flowers. This one's really nice, it's a watercolor, Philadelphia. This one reminds me of Utah. Have you guys ever seen that movie? I forget what it's called. It, it came out, what, maybe 10 years ago about the guy who fell down into the, into like this crater and he had to cut his own arm off. When I lived in Colorado, he lived there and he would always speak at like REI and stuff. He'd, he'd give like speeches, really interesting character. Like that was, that's a good movie. I forget what it's called, but I'll Google it to refresh my memory and I'll put the title on. I highly suggest watching it. It was a good movie. But this card reminded me of, <laughs> this card reminded me of that. And this one's pretty with the flowers. And this one came all the way from Denmark. It's a nice postcard. Got this cute Halloween card. Little crab. And this one's cute, witchy wishes. Costco is a good idea. <laughs> it's a little inside joke. And one of you sent me this adorable Happy Thanksgiving red truck since I was commenting, I guess, that <laughs> There's never any Thanksgiving decorations out. And one of you guys snagged this and sent it to me. And you know I love the red truck. So thank you so much. And this beauty, somebody made for me. It is um, a t-shirt and she designed it. it. Says SPF stands for Stay Pretty Forever. I love it. And you, she also made some stickers for me of the same design, it's really nice. She has a shop online, I think, her card says, so I'll put that down in the description box for you guys, but how pretty is that? Oh, here's another card that came, the pumpkin. <laughs> this shop from Etsy has sent me bracelets before, Belmare Designs. They have like custom name, custom name bracelets, and they sent me a new style. I really like these. Dr. Dre, this one has square beads. Then one of you sent me some stickers. We got pumpkins, holiday beverages, happy little snowmen. These are going to be great for my planner. Bees, some flowers for spring. I'll be here before you know it. And like little succulents and watering cans. Those are adorable. Thank you so much. And then the same viewer who sent me these before sent me this style. These are the Gimme Beauty hair ties. And she said she thought this one might do the triple turn that I need to keep my hair up. So thank you so much. It's very kind of you to send these to me. I do use the other ones in a low ponytail, but I can't use them for running. So we'll give these a try. Maybe they'll um, do the triple loop that I need to keep my ponytail up. And then I got some jazzy hair, um, jazzy shower caps. Check this one out. It's got some bling on it. I just love it. It's kind of got a retro vibe to it. And then this one, one of you sent me, Quo Beauty. It looks like a pink one. And then I got a bunch here that came in an Amazon package one of you sent me. So thank you so much. <laughs> that was sweet of you guys. You don't have to send me anything, but I do enjoy getting your cards. Did my skincare routine. Got my tretinoin on. And, oh, update. I put on my new shirt that viewer sent me that she made. So, so pretty. Anyways, speaking of stay pretty, I just did my PM skincare routine. And I have been using this uh, PCA, skin, geez, PCA Skin Pigment Gel. I'll pick it up by the top and it lift off. PCA Skin Pigment Gel again, as you guys know. And I've been using it now twice a day for probably about six weeks. I've used it in the past. Um, and I definitely feel though my skin tone is more even. 
using this. I mean, I see a difference and I feel a difference. I feel like my skin texture is smoother. It has a little bit of lactic acid in it. It's got kojic acid and azelaic acid. Azelaic acid gently helps with skin cell turnover as well. And it's anti-inflammatory. It's good for acne. This is a skincare favorite of mine. I mean, the ingredients in this are all very good for hyperpigmentation, but they're very gentle ingredients, gentle and effective. And they're also good for like redness, if you have that mixed in, because it's got the azelaic acid. They're really good ingredients to for people with acne as well, um, because of the azelaic acid in there and the lactic acid can just kind of help facilitate a little bit of skin cell turnover and improve uh, moisture retention and the skin barrier. So I've been using just a tiny amount uh, twice a day, and I definitely notice an improvement in overall skin texture and tone using that. Um, last time I used it was a, two years ago and that's when I really saw the most striking difference. At that time I was using it again alongside tretinoin, but I had a lot more hyperpigmentation than I was aiming to improve and I definitely saw a really noticeable difference. As a matter of fact, sometimes I've gone back and seen some of my older videos and I swear at that time there was, I had a patch of hyperpigmentation like on my chin somewhere if I remember correctly and that is completely gone since um, using treadmill and and then that bout of using using the PCA skin pigment gel that completely cleared it up. Hyperpigmentation it just takes a very long time to fade certain types. Now, if your hyperpigmentation is located down in the dermis in the deeper layer of the skin, it's going to be pigment that is residing within. Uh, what are called melanophages. Basically, a cell in the immune system called a macrophage engulfs pigment and it kind of stays down there. As the epidermal part of the hyperpigmentation starts to improve, if you have pigment down in the deeper layers of the skin, you may notice that more so as the top part is improving. It takes patience and it takes aggressive sun protection. People are always asking me what's the best sunscreen for people with melasma. Honestly, the one that you like and will use and will wear consistently is the best one. Now, people also ask like, well, is it safe to use chemical sunscreen if I have melasma? It is safe, but some people find that chemical sunscreens cause a little bit of irritation. And if that is you, if you get e if your skin is easily irritated by chemical sunscreens, then I would say avoid them and instead choose mineral. The reason is that anything that causes irritation, irritating skincare products will aggravate will aggravate the melasma, in which case I would say choose a mineral. But there's no rule that you have to do, you cannot do chemical sunscreens if you have melasma. And if you live outside of the US where you have a lot more chemical filters at your disposal for your sunscreens, well, chances are, you know, those sunscreens outside of the US, the chemical ones, they're a lot less irritating than the ones we have here because we only have so many ingredients that we can use. And you know, now that there's so much fear mongering around some of the ingredients and companies are like trying to, you know, kick them out of their sunscreens, whatever. I mean, it is what it is. But um, for that reason, American US sunscreens, US chemical sunscreens tend to be more irritating and burn and sting. Um, but if you don't find that they burn or sting, for example, that black girl sunscreen one, it doesn't burn or sting, at least for me and it doesn't leave a cast. So that is one that a lot of you guys really like and it's more than fine to use in melasma provided it doesn't cause irritation. Same thing with any kind of hyperpigmentation, you know, in addition to melasma, it's fine to use a chemical sunscreen provided you tolerate it. Um, but the sunscreen is essential because UV is what leads to more pigment and also the um, oxidative stress upregulates that as well. And so that's really an important part. Now, when it comes to hyperpigmentation, you've got to protect your skin from UV, but we've now you know, learned that uh, visible light, the light that you see with your eyes um, and the blue light wavelengths, so the HEV it's called, that that contributes to early onset and more stubborn hyperpigmentation. And some uh, sunscreens can offer a little bit of protection against that if they are formulated with iron oxides. And it's not, it's complicated. They have to have black, yellow, and red iron oxides. They have to have the right concentration. And the formula overall dictates if it will actually offer you that protection against the HEV wavelengths. The Aven Tinted Mineral Compact was used in a study and was shown to be helpful for blocking that. So I always mention that one. And then Color Science actually measures the HEV 
the blue light protection on their sunscreens and they're you know they've actually shown that theirs do it i mean granted it is their studies but it's better than nothing so you can't just look at a sunscreen and say is this going to protect me from those blue light wavelengths having iron oxides in there you know it's a it's a good there's a good chance you'll get some hev protection but it's not a guarantee um so yeah <laughs> anyways Sunscreen is really important for fading the hyperpigmentation. Now, speaking of blue light protection, this is by Aven, and they came out with a filter that's not available in the US it's called Triazorb, and that, they claim, does protect against both UV as well as HEV. Um, they show their studies and everything, and they claim that this filter is legit for that. I've been wearing this sunscreen a lot lately and I love it. I mean, I get a lot of comments that people hate the sunscreen, that it rubs off on their clothes. I have not had any issues with it. I would say it has become a favorite sunscreen from this year. A viewer sent it to me, that's how I got it. You can't just walk into a store in the US and buy it because it's from Europe. It's water resistant and it does not burn and sting. See, my experience personally in using both American chemical sunscreens and European chemical sunscreens and Japanese sunscreen chemical sunscreens, you can see that you can feel the difference in how the product, because they have so many more filters available, you can feel the difference as far as they're, those outside of the US are far less irritating. And it's because they're able to tweak the formula that they're able to create something that doesn't burn and sting as much. Um, in my experience, like for example, this is a Japanese sunscreen that I really love, the Skin Aqua. This, is, this um, has some chemical filters in it, it doesn't burn or sting. I think it also has zinc in it if I'm remembering correctly. Anyways, um, like Japanese sunscreens, I've never, they've never caused any burning or stinging. And same thing with Canadian, like the Garnier sunscreens, no burning or stinging. The Garnier sunscreens from Canada, the ones here in the States, they might burn or sting. I mean, you can tell the difference right away. You can definitely feel the difference. Update, I'm still loving this. It's no longer available on the Amazonian. This is my step tracker watch. Um, it holds a charge for seven days. I, I charge it on Sunday nights, uh, or excuse me, I charge it on Saturday night, overnight, and then it's good to go on Sunday. Holds a charge, it counts your steps. It also claims to measure your sleep. I haven't really been paying it. Oops paying attention to that so much, but there's an app that goes with it and you can see how much deep sleep you got. I don't know, I kind of think that's a gimmick, but it was like under $20 and they took it away. It's called, the brand was Lintelec. They have some others on Amazon that are kind of similar. Um, I don't know if they're as good though. But anyways, guys, thank you for coming along and hanging out with me today. I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.